Are you new to X-Plane 11 and wondering where do I start? Well, don't worry, it's a common question. There are enough features, add-ons, and resources available for X-Plane 11 to make your head spin, and it can seem pretty confusing. Well, today we'll break through the clouds and I'll show you the important steps you can take to maintain a level approach to get started with X-Plane 11 and get the most out of it. As most of you know, I'm not a pilot. I'm a flight sim enthusiast who's been flying in them since Sublogic FS1 ran on an Apple II. Yeah, that's before Microsoft bought Sublogic in 1982, and probably before many of you were born. I'm always on the hunt for the next flight sim technology, and from my perspective, X-Plane 11's technology is incredible. Developed by Laminar Research, X-Plane 11 is a powerful flight sim platform that provides realistic flight imagery and physics. It's the training platform of choice for many real-world pilots and is used all over the world by flight sim hobbyists. When first getting started with X-Plane, the number of options within the sim and available from third parties can be overwhelming. While it's a complex flight sim platform, learning how to use it to its fullest doesn't have to be complicated, and I'd like to help you organize your approach to learning how to take full advantage of X-Plane 11. As a quick note, I'll have links in the description to the resources I mentioned in this video. So now let's get started by breaking this mission into four steps. Knowledge, configuration and control, flight training, and resources. First, let's take a look at knowledge. As I mentioned, X-Plane 11 is a complex flight sim platform with many moving parts. While most of it happens behind the scenes in software, there are some areas you'll need to learn about to get the most out of your investment. X-Plane is designed to accurately model the performance of aircraft and allow you to fly with varying degrees of complexity. Just like there's much to learn about flying an aircraft, there's a lot to learn about the software that simulates the flight. X-Plane 11 desktop manual is available online, and a read through this will help you get familiar with how to effectively use the flight sim. This is a resource you'll be using often, so keep the link handy. Many of the X-Plane 11 planes will use a GPS modeled after the Garmin G530 for navigation. To get from point A to point B, it's important to have an understanding of how to operate this GPS. There's a great video tutorial on YouTube that'll take you through it step by step. Putting in the time to master the G530 will make your navigation a breeze. Getting involved in connecting with the X-Plane community is a great way to continue your knowledge grab. Xplane.org and the Xplane Next Gen group on Facebook are great places you can connect and share with other Xplane users. Now let's take a look at configuration and control. Configuring the performance and functionality of Xplane is critical to getting the most out of the flight sim. Your PC platform and resources play a big part in this step. While most people will use single monitor setups, configs are different and you'll need to find the right balance for your system between performance and visual appearance. YouTuber QA Pilot has a very helpful settings guide video that will help you understand more about this. Today, most people fly in 2D, but some may want to try virtual reality flying, which is my preference. As of May 2017, X-Plane does not inherently support virtual reality headsets. However, you can fly X-Plane 11 in VR using fly Inside's add-on software, which provides support for Oculus Rift and HTC Vive. I have a few videos on my channel on this topic, but you can also check out fly Inside's website for more information. X-Plane also allows you to improve the look and feel of your world scenery. AL Pilot X HD Scenery is an easy way to add high-def scenery to your system, if you prefer to create mesh scenery on your own, you can check out Ortho4XP, an app and method that allows creation of high-def scenery for X-Plane. Now let's talk about controlling your aircraft in X-Plane 11. While many users fly using keyboard and mouse, there are more immersive options available such as yokes, flight sticks, throttles, rudder pedals, and control panels, most of which that are connected via USB. X-Plane 11 makes it fairly simple to configure and calibrate these devices. I highly recommend investing in a yoke or flight stick as these will give you the best flight control experience. Personally, I use CH Products Flight Sim Yoke, which is about $120 on Amazon. YouTube, Google, and xplane.org are great places to learn more about these control options. Now let's talk about flight training. For those with flight sim experience, you can probably skip this part, but going through X-Plane 11's flight school lessons will help you get accustomed to how to operate aircraft in the flight sim. Flight School covers general aviation, navigation, and helicopters. For general aviation and navigation, you'll be flying the Cessna C-172, which is a great aircraft to learn on. In fact, before you start spending your hard-earned cash filling your hangar with third-party airplanes, I highly recommend mastering the stock C-172. This single-engine plane will get you around at about 120 knots and allow you to get comfortable with X-Plane's flight model. You can also put your G530 GPS knowledge to test in this aircraft. 
After you become a C-172 Ace, you can move on to other stock aircraft X-Plane offers, or you might want to check out Airfoil Lab Cessna C-172 SP, which is designed to offer enhanced procedures, physics, modeling, and failures. For those interested in helicopters, X-Plane offers basic training, but only one helicopter is offered in X-Plane. And finally, let's take a look at resources. For your ongoing knowledge grab, it's important to have great resources. X-Plane 11 is an expansive platform that allows you to build a flight sim system that fits your needs. A good resource to start with is Laminar for official manual and knowledge base located on their support page. You'll also find customer support contact info there, and Laminar also has a blog page that can help you keep up to date on new features and news. It's helpful to stay connected with various resources that cater to X-Plane users. As I mentioned before, xplane.org is a great resource that provides discussion forums and a marketplace for X-Plane add-ons. Also, the X-Plane NextGen Facebook group has over 5,000 members and is an active group with advice, tips, and discussions. As you get more into the navigation aspect of flight sim flying, you'll need references to help you with flight plans, airport information, weather, and so on. Sky Vector and X Flight Planner are good places to start. Both offer free accounts to get you started. And finally, for those who are interested in diving deeper into the weeds, you can check out the developer.xplane.com blog that offers posts from developers providing status of new releases, bug fixes, and features. So in summary, these are the initial steps you can take to get the most out of X-Plane 11. My intent was to provide you with a basic roadmap of how to get started. As you gain experience, you'll find there are a ton of options available both free and payware to enhance your X-Plane experience. I suggest keeping it simple to start. It's very tempting to buy those really cool third-party planes or that awesome custom scenery pack. But learning X-Plane 11 with the Cessna C-172 will prepare you to advance your virtual flying experience in what I believe is the best consumer flight Light sim available. Thanks for watching guys and I hope you enjoyed this X-Plane 11 beginner's guide. Please hit the like button if you like what you saw today and don't forget to subscribe to Bambino Games for more X-Plane Flight Simulation. Have a great day.